Okay, so as I mentioned before, the heart of MoGraph is the cloner object. So if we come to the MoGraph menu, we drop in a cloner, and you'll notice in and of itself the cloner does nothing. It needs an object to work on. So we'll come up here, we'll put a cube in the scene, and I'm just going to come over here to the coordinates tab, take my position up 100 centimeters so that I'm sitting on top of the grid. Let me go ahead and scale this down a little bit. And I'm going to drop the cube underneath the cloner object. And you'll notice immediately that something has definitely happened here. So if we go and we take a look at this, when we look at the cloner, we can see that the cube has been duplicated in a linear fashion, which is selected right here, on the y-axis. So right now, these cubes are 50 centimeters apart. So if we increase this number, we can see a little better what we have going on here. Right now, we have a count of three cubes. If we adjust that, zoom out here, you can see that we could bring this up very quickly. Okay, let's go ahead and throw a few more of these on here. Zoom out. So you can control these in all sorts of different ways. If I adjust the X coordinates, we get something like this. The Z takes us over like that. All right, let's go back to zero on these. We could come over here and control scaling on the different axis. Get some very unusual results. All right, let's go ahead and take these back to 100. And we could also play around with the rotation. All right, so there's a lot of really interesting effects that you can create with the cloner object. Very powerful. Now, like I said, right now we're in a linear mode. And that's shown by the mode indicator here. So we could change that to something like a radial mode. And let's take the radius up here. So we get something like this. Again, we could adjust our count. All right. And you could control the start angle or the end angle. All right. Pretty interesting. We could choose a grid array mode. So we get something like this. We could control the count in X, Y, and Z. So if we wanted to do 10, 10, 10. Now it looks like we just have a box here. But we could go and we could animate the size in X, Y, and Z if we wanted. Create some very interesting animations. All right. Very cool stuff. And again, we've talked about the render instances before, but if you start getting a lot of clones in your scene, then this is probably going to be something you're going to want to take a look at. It optimizes memory on your computer so that it doesn't have to really draw every single cube in the scene. So it's a memory management option, and this is something you're probably going to want to take a look at if you've got thousands of clones in your scene. Okay, so let's get rid of this. The last option that I want to talk about with the cloner object is the object mode. So let me come over here and drop a sphere in the scene. We'll scale that up a little bit. Next, I'm going to drop a cube in the scene. Let's just pull that out so that you can see it. Let's make that much smaller. So what I'm going to want to do is take the cube, put it underneath the cloner, all right, then we're going to select the cloner, and while we're in object mode, we have an object input area. So I'm going to take the sphere, 
and drop it in this object area. And you'll see that we have our cubes being cloned over the surface of the sphere. Okay, it's pretty cool. Now at the moment, the cubes are being cloned over the vertex. If you look at the distribution down here, they're on the vertex points of the sphere. So if I came up here to the sphere and change that from a standard sphere to one of these different types, you're going to see that the vertex points change on the sphere. Thus, the cubes change their positions. You can see the differences here. Let's go back to the standard sphere. Click on the cloner. Now, that's one distribution method. Another one would be to put the cubes along the edges. Okay. And this might make a little more sense if I come over here to display, turn on quick shading lines. If I turn off the cube, you can see the edges. And these are the vertex points. So let's turn the cube back on. So right now, we've got these going along the edges. We turn it to vertex. You can see they are aligned exactly on the vertex points of the sphere. Another distribution method would be surface. Okay, and we can control the amount. Again, these are all animatable. And the last one is volume. So what's going on here is that all of these things are being put inside the volume of the sphere. Let me go to the sphere and go to the basic tab, turn on x-ray mode so that we can see inside of it. And you'll notice that all of our cubes are inside the sphere. Go to the cloner object. We can increase that. But they're trying to stay inside this object. Okay, so that's the basics of the cloner object here in Cinema 4D.